Dear brothers and sisters, I have decided to come out here today uh, together with the image of uh, Saint John Paul II, one of the most beloved saints of the end of the 20th century, beginning of the 21st century, in order to share a little bit with you the story of this saint that we celebrate today, which is not Saint John Paul II, but is Saint Aloysius Gonzaga. And uh, he was a very young man. He died at the age of 23. But uh, already at uh, the early, st early stages of his life, he showed signs of, um, of a special relationship with God. You know, and this is vocation in a sense, right? Um, all of us, we have, of course, our community relationship with God, but we also have our personal relationship with God. God speaks to you and me uh, personally as well. And he has given to me, he has given also to you specific graces, specific gifts, qualities as well that show his glory through you in your life for other people. Other people can know a little bit more about the glory of God because you are an individual person who, have, who has specific, beautiful uh, gifts and you can share it with others. And Aloysius already, from the beginning of his life, it is said that when he was you know, a baby, when he was already you know, starting to speak at least, um, he, the first words that he said were Jesus and Mary, the holy names of Jesus and Mary. Right, and this is something that for sure is remembered because imagine a parent, for sure his mother, his father were waiting that he would say maybe mom, daddy, but the first things he said were Jesus and Mary, right? At the age of nine, he already had decided, it is recounted to us that he would become a religious, he would devote his life, uh, his whole, uh, whatever he was, you know, his life as a man, as a, as a person, to the religious life. He would dedicate himself completely to his faith in the religious life. And it is recounted that he also, already at that age, made a vow of perpetual virginity. And just by saying this, we have to uh, come to the conclusion, right, that uh, how can someone at the age of nine make such a vow? It is probably because he was very well educated into the faith and he knew what he was doing. He knew what that meant, perpetual vow of virginity, right, of staying virgin forever, right? And he made that vow at the age of nine, um, already probably making it known to his uh, parents and to other people. And this is something amazing about this, this young man. And also another sign that he, his, you know, his decisions and um, his vocation didn't come just out of the blue is that he was also surrounded in his life by at least two other saints. One of them was St. Charles Borromeo, the Bishop of Milan, famous for, you know, implementing the, uh, the rules and the counter-reform that came with Trent, trying to revitalize uh, the, the trustworthiness of the Church and of the Catholic faith, right? And this man, this holy man, Bishop uh, Charles Borromeo, was the one that gave First Communion to Saint Aloysius Gonzaga. And Aloysius, uh, he had a, re a really great desire to become a Jesuit. You know, the Jesuits were prominent in those times, and he wanted to be one of them. But his father was against it. But, you know, at the age of 18, he finally convinced his father, because of his great desire, his father came to see that there was no use saying no to this man, to this young man. His decision was firm, was conscious, was really coming from God. And he allowed him, he let him go, 
and he became a Jesuit. And it's also beautiful about St. Aloysius, something that uh, kind of relates to our times today, that he died actually helping at a hospital. There was the time of the plague in Europe, and he was working at a hospital helping uh, the sick, right? After helping the poor many times just with giving them catechesis, he was also attending to the sick in their uh, times of uh, trial with sicknesses, with the plague, which was very contagious, and he ended up being also infected by this illness, and he died of it at the age of 23 or 24. I'm not really uh, completely sure, but was either 23 or 24 years old, right? And the last rites, he received them from Saint Robert Bellarmine, who actually wrote his life after. And this is why we can say all these things that sometimes they might seem to us, oh, this is too, too much to believe. Uh, the account of his life was written by Saint Robert Bellarmine who probably was so touched by this young man that he said, you know, this story needs to be recounted. And this is amazing, brothers and sisters. We are in great times, times of uh, challenge, of course, because we, we like to believe that, you know, the church, uh, now maybe 200, 300 years ago, the church didn't have struggles with uh, bishops saying this or priests doing that or people going astray and so on, but it's not true. The church was always, has always been in challenge because the church, you know, is always opposed from inside and from outside because the faith is like this, it, it challenges everyone. But the beauty of everything in our history is that God always provides us with saints, with holy men and women who are so touched by His love that they share it with the whole world and they help us persevere as well in our own journeys. So courage, let us take up Saint Robert, uh, Saint Aloysius Gonzaga today, ask for his intercession that he may also help you, help uh, uh, those that you know as well, to come to see what is their vocation and to be as courageous as he was to say yes to God. God bless you all.